about 10 miles west of Parsons, Kansas, is a piece of land that has nothing left on it except a hole that's been filled in. And what happened there on that land was so horrifying and so terrifying that it seems that the evil sunk right into the land where a small house once sat. These people were America's first known serial killer family. And today's story is about the Bloody Benders. Hey guys, I'm Kira Janae. Thanks for coming back for another Ghost Stories and Makeup. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, make sure you don't miss anything in the future. Right now, you can tell that I am sounding like sh** because I'm kind of sick, but I didn't want to miss out on doing an episode this week, so I hope that you'll hang out with me through this and, you know, turn your volume up if you can't hear me. Before we get into the bloody benders, I think that we need to talk about the history of what was happening in the late 19th century here in the good old U.S. of A. See, in the late 19th century, westward expansion was pushing people from the East Coast into the Midwest and to the West Coast. Those people were sort of infiltrating land that wasn't necessarily theirs, but the federal government wasn't really willing to push them out either. So with the Treaty of 1870, the federal government pushed the Osage Indian tribe off of their land, which frankly is a really shitty thing to do. Now, prior to that, the Osage were having trouble keeping people off of their land anyway. And to make shitty even shittier for the Osage Indians was the fact that in another treaty, they had been promised the land that they were living on as long as the wind blows and the grass grows. And I'm not like using pretty language at this point. That was literally the words written into the treaty. But Kira, what does this have to do with the bloody benders? Well, I think background information is kind of important, especially when we're dealing with crazy shit that happened way back when. Well, one often used Osage Trail led from Fort Scott, Kansas to Independence, Kansas. And nearly smack dab in the middle of that trail is Bender's Mound. It's a place of horror. Now, about the time that the Osage were being moved out, a new family moved in to what would be LaBelle County. And actually, this family's new home was only a few miles from the famous Ingalls family. You know, the ones from Little House on the Prairie, if you're into that sort of thing. When this new family moved in, they didn't come alone. They actually came with a group of about five families, all of whom claimed to be spiritualists. So I'm pretty sure that they were an interesting bunch. This one particular family consisted of four people, a mother, a father, a brother, and a daughter. They were known to the town as William or John Bender, wife Elvira Bender, son John Jr., and daughter Kate. But here's the f***ing tea. None of those people were actually who they claimed to be. And actually, none of them were named Bender. And despite representing themselves as a family, the only two that were actually related were Elvira and Kate. Pa Bender, as he preferred to be called, was actually John Flickinger, who resided previously in either Germany or the Netherlands. Elvira, or Ma Bender, as she preferred to be called, was actually from the Adirondacks, and she was born Elmira Meek. Now, Elmira had a questionable past, which frankly makes me think that she was the instigator of the whole operation. Elmira married a man named George Griffith when she was in her teens. She bore him 12 children. One of them was Kate. But not long after, George was found dead from what they described as a bad place on his head which ended up being more or less a big dent, which all seems really tragic and strange, right? Except that it wasn't. After George died, Almira ended up remarrying three times. And unfortunately for every single one of those men, they were also found dead, bludgeoned to death by what appeared to be a hammer. 
And what pushes Elmira even further into freaky, suspicious killer territory is the fact that it's said that she killed three of her own children to prevent them from testifying against her in court. How she evaded arrest is completely beyond me. But that's not all, because John Jr. was actually John Gebbard, and the people of the town said that he had such a creepy laugh, and he laughed at such inappropriate moments that everybody thought he was dim-witted. Don't come for me. That's the language they used then. Now, like I said, Kate was actually related to Elvira, or Elvira, either way. She was related to her. She was actually her fifth child, but her real name was Eliza Griffith. And doesn't all this information just make you wonder if you actually know your neighbors? But moving on, in most cases, Kate and John Jr. were passed off as being brother and sister. However, there were a few people who knew them as husband and wife. Either way, it was pretty well known that these two had some sort of romantic entanglement. <sighs> and honestly, the rumors that circulated about John Jr. and Kate were straight up terrifying. It was actually suspected that Kate had become pregnant on multiple occasions by John Jr. And on those occasions when Kate found herself with child, they would wait until she gave birth and then they would bludgeon the baby to death. And I just can't figure it out. Like, this is the Wild West. If people really believed these rumors, why didn't they chase their asses out of Dodge? So anyway, like I said, the Benders had moved to town with a group of people, all of which claimed to be spiritualists. And Ma and Kate Bender weren't any different than the rest of those people. See, Kate was actually known to travel around the area giving spiritualistic lectures, as well as claiming to be able to cure just about any horrible ailment. Ma Bender passed herself off as a medium who could speak to ghosts. Now, this is where history gets a little mucky, but also super f***ed up. It's said that in town, Pa and the two children were very well liked in the community. The kids went to church every Sunday, and Pa and John Jr. attended all of the meetings regarding the town. Ma Bender, however, was dubbed a real pain in the ass, and everybody called her She-Devil. And I don't think a single one of them knew how right they were. Of course, even with Pa and the kids being relatively well-liked, none of them were f***ing trustworthy. They had built a small two-room house, which they had partitioned into separate sides by a wagon cover. The front side of the structure had a little sign out front that said groceries, and they did, in fact, have some groceries inside, they also offered travelers meals and boarding accommodations. But I wouldn't want to be one of them unlucky f***ers. See, all of those guests who wanted to stay there at the Bender's place found themselves bludgeoned with their throats slit. See, and doesn't it, doesn't it sound like Ma's M.O.? I'm pretty sure she was the ringleader. I'm certain of it. See, what these tricky bastards did was when a stranger would come in for a meal, they would set them at the head of the table, which was backed right up against the partition. Then one of the men, either Pa or John Jr., would stand behind the partition and use a hammer to bludgeon them in the head. After the victim had been rightly bludgeoned, one of the women would come forward and slice their throat. Jeebus, it's hotter than the devil's ass hole in here. So in 1871 and 1872, there was sort of an influx of missing people. And that influx of missing people created an influx of people looking for the missing. And those people who had gone missing were generally last heard from in Fort Scott, Independence, or the Osage missions. Now in 1873, there was a public meeting that Pa and John Jr. attended. Officials threatened to get warrants to search everybody's houses, but pretty much everybody in town complied, 
except for the benders. Two of the missing parties belonged to the Louchers. It was a man and his eight-year-old daughter. Now, unfortunately for the Bender family, the Louchers were friends of a man named Dr. York of Independence, Kansas. Dr. York went searching for the Louchers, but he himself disappeared somewhere along the way. And by now, you know where I'm going with this. But unfortunately, the Benders didn't have any good forewarning about the horrible mistake that they had finally made. The missing Dr. York had a brother named Colonel A.M. York, who actually fought in the Civil War. And upon his brother becoming missing, Colonel A.M. York took off to find him. But the Colonel didn't come alone. He actually brought 50 to 75 people on the search with him. Now, Colonel York and his posse searched the whole Osage Trail from Fort Scott to Independence. And we can all pretty much more or less guess what happened because if they had found him, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But having searched that trail and having not found his brother, Colonel A.M. York and his group of searchers stopped by the old Bender place. Now, the good colonel didn't really find anything, but he did ask Kate, because she claimed that she was a spiritualist, to help him locate his brother. Of course, being the crafty girl that Kate was, she pretended to assist them, but made sure that she didn't say anything that would implicate her or her family. Apparently, that was the last straw for the Benders, because after the search party left, that whole clan took the f*** off. Not long after, on about May 1st, 1973, a man was passing by the Bender home. What he saw was cattle and other livestock wandering around the property as if they were lost. And they ended up finding that they weren't lost. The animals were actually starving to death. Then, going on good old suspicion, those people entered the Bender home. And when they did, they were met with a horrible, putrid stench. What they found in the back of the house was a hole filled with congealed blood. See, what had happened was the benders would store bodies down there after they murdered them inside the house until they could bring them out at nightfall and bury them. They ended up moving the whole house and found nothing else until somebody noticed a divot in the garden, where they in fact found the body of Dr. Cox. Then the search party found the body of Mr. Loucher and his daughter. And here's where things get really fucking sick. Dr. Loucher's daughter, the eight-year-old girl, was covered in horrendous, horrendous injuries. But none of those injuries would have actually killed her so everybody believes that the daughter Loucher was buried alive. All in all, they found 10 bodies in the garden, but could only identify six of them. Then later they found four more bodies, as well as some dismembered body parts down by a local creek with the same injuries as those that we know were the benders, a bashed in head and a slit throat. Freakily enough, the Benders were never found. And now it's said that those who died on the property still haunt the place, coming up from the hole in the ground where their bodies were once stored. You can hear them moaning from the street, they say. And there are also some ghostly apparitions that can be seen from time to time. Many people believe that Kate is stuck on the property paying for the sins that she once committed. So that's all I have for you today for the bloody benders. Anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to put on some eyelashes and I'll be back with your final look. All right, unicorns, I'm back and this is your final look. Do you like it? I'm loving it. Anyway, you guys, I'm so glad that you came and hang out with me today, but I hope you'll come back and see me next time. I hope that you'll click the like button. I hope that you'll click the subscribe button. 
And until then, don't forget to always love yourself, always be a unicorn, and I'll see you next time. Bye!